So for those of you who watched the story of Clover, our milk cow, who was getting ready to have her calf and what to expect, this is our follow-up. And as you can see from this big bottle, and someone who is going to be mooing quite loudly letting me know I'm a wee bit late with his said bottle, we have a very healthy, beautiful, now steer calf. So Clover delivered Rebel. And Rebel is a big hungry boy, huh? Who was breech and upside down, which is part of the reason that Clover was down for so long and in labor um, and had a hard time delivering him. We actually had to help her, we had to pull him. But as you can see, he is very healthy and very large. So right now, Rebel is three weeks old. No, Rebel doesn't like you. He thinks you're a big mean dog and you mean him harm. He doesn't know you want to be friends. No, no, you leave him alone. You're not coming in. Thank you. You have to stay out. He doesn't like you. So I'm gonna try to get through this without crying, but Clover did not make it. Um, I did a very detailed podcast with blog post article that I'm gonna link to below, below this video. Uh, one, because talking about it makes me cry still, and I really don't want to be on camera sobbing in front of in front of you all and not able to talk. But that podcast episode with the written blog post goes into great detail about everything, including information on milk fever, ketosis, a lot of things if you have a dairy cow especially that's getting ready to go into labor that you definitely want to be aware of and know about ahead of time. So that is there below for you. So for a quick recap, Clover delivered Rebel late on a Wednesday night and she got up and he was able to nurse, she was walking around and we really thought everything was gonna be fine. Over the course of two days, she declined to the point that uh, the, vet, the vet, we had to put her down. Um, but what I wanna say about that is they were actually su suspectful that she had cancer. We did a lot of labs and a lot of work and tried a lot of things before unfortunately um, making the decision to put her down. And they were very suspectful that she had cancer or something else that was going on beyond just the labor because her labs and her metabolic panel, including her muscles, all of those measurements didn't match the symptoms um, or how thin she was based upon what she had in her system, all of the food, everything like that. So at that point, there was really no reason for us to do an autopsy or test for cancer because she wasn't going to make it anyways. And so Clover delivered Rebel on Wednesday and she passed away that Friday night and was buried in the back pasture um, because we didn't know for sure what, you know, what she had had, um, if there was other things like cancer. Um, and we had already determined that she was gonna live out her days. We just thought it would be a lot longer here on our homestead um, that she was not going to be a beef animal. So she's laid to rest and is nourishing the pasture in her own way. Um, and finished out her days here with us on the homestead. So I now have this lovely calf that she left me. He has been a steer. Um, as you can tell from his size, he's only three weeks old, but he's really large. Um, and that was actually, he was so large that he outgrew his tendons on his front legs. We had to have wrapped for the first couple of days uh, to get them to lengthen up because he walked kind of uh, bow-legged. Um, and he was so large that we just in good conscience couldn't leave him a bull, even though emotionally I would have loved to have had him been a bull. And so Clover would have lived on in our other cows. But one of the things is when you are looking at a bull to breed, you want a bull that throws small babies so that you don't have issues during birthing, but then grow rapidly and well to weight and to size, etc. after birth. And because he is so big, um, even the vet on right after we had him when he was one day old. Normally a one day old, the first couple as a newborn calf, you would feed them um, a half a gallon twice a day. So they would be getting a gallon of milk. 
and he's like with his size he really needs to be fed at least three times a day and getting one and a half gallons and that was just at the first few days of now he is at two gallons four times a day and you it's all gone you did it it's all gone so we are bottle feeding <laughs> four times a day um, but he is a steer we didn't keep him as a bull I just couldn't take a chance of passing on those genetics and, and his size and endangering all of our cows for an emotional attachment. So as homesteaders, we definitely get attached to our animals and it can be really hard when they pass, but you also have to make decisions that aren't based solely on emotions, right? And so we ended up, yep, you're now a steer. Yes, you're a steer, huh? And I'm trying not to get too attached to him because he is a steer, which means he will be a beef animal, but he's really cute. We're also working on our politeness because right now he's small, even though he's big for three weeks, um, and learning that we don't get to headbutt, no, and you don't get a walk on me, and you have to keep your distance, right? Yep, we're learning all those things because what's really cute as a three-week-old calf, when he is full-sized and a steer out in the pasture, nope is not gonna be so cute. And I actually used to have horses and train horses, and a lot of the times you would see behaviors in horses, same thing with calves that have been bottle fed, that unfortunately cause a lot of issues down the road, and it's not the animal's fault, it was the person who was training them and let them do things that were really cute when they were little, not thinking about it's not so cute when they're a bigger, bigger animal and they do that. So he's being very good lately at remembering spatial awareness and that we're not allowed to headbutt. And right now, you can see we had a lot of snow. So I've been keeping him here in the barn overnight. The herd has been really good about accepting him, actually, especially our younger steers. However, he does not like you. No, he thinks you're a big mean dog and you're gonna hurt him. So you need to go this way. What are you thinking? Yeah. So the herd's usually pretty good with him, especially the younger steers. We've got a couple of yearling steers and they're very accepting. They'll let him bed down with him. Um, they let him hang out without any problem. The older girls really could care less. They're like, we've got our own kids to take care of. So at night, he still goes into the shed to make sure he stays dry and warm and he's protected because we do have quite a few coyotes uh, in different those type of predators just to make sure and he's still little and we're still pretty cold out so i want to make sure he stays dry at night so right now it finally stopped snowing so i let him out when it's not raining a lot um, just to make sure that he stays nice and warm and dry and doesn't develop young calves can get pneumonia really easy that type of thing but right now it's really dry out and we've warmed up quite a bit so we'll let him out for the afternoon and then put him back in at the four o'clock feeding and then he gets another feeding at eight o'clock. So we get to spend quite a bit of time together. You know, it can be really easy when you're sharing your life and lessons and all of that stuff with people online, especially in video format. It's really fun to share the exciting things and the really cool things and the raw milk and the vegetables and all of that. But when you are homesteading and you're raising livestock and even just raising crops within a garden and you, you do it for a period of time, eventually things are going to go wrong and you're gonna have hardships and there are gonna be days that it's really hard to be a farmer. But it's really important to know that those pass and if this was easy, then everybody would be doing it. And I think that's with anything in life, like anything that's worth doing, anything that's really worth having, it's gonna be hard, but that's what makes it worth it. That's what makes it sp special. I don't think that we were meant to have an easy button on everything in life. In fact, I think that quite honestly, if we always expect things to be easy, then we're going to be pretty dissatisfied when things aren't always easy and think that there's something wrong when that's what life is. There's supposed to be things that are hard because it's the things that we work hard at that we truly value and we find our self-worth in. 
and we build our confidence in. I mean, the things that came easy to me, I am grateful for them, but the things I've really had to work for, when I finally achieve that or get the end result from that and it was something I worked really hard at, those are the things that really matter. Those are the things that challenge us and those are the things that grow us and those are the things we truly care about on a really deep level. And so I just think it's really important that we share all aspects of this homesteading journey and raising your own food, especially when it comes with animals. We care deeply about our animals. I know most farmers and homesteaders do. So it's important that we share the whole picture and the whole side of that, even when it is hard, so that you know as you step into this life that those hard times are gonna come, but they are worth it. This is a journey worth walking, even with those hard spots.